It's only been one week since the release of the most highly anticipated Resident Evil game in recent history. The original Resident Evil 4 is well known for being one of the best games of all time, and its speedrun is one of the most competitive games out there. In fact, in the past 18 years since Resident Evil 4 was released, Resident Evil has become one of the largest and most active speedrunning communities in the scene. Almost every single game in the series having multiple people speedrunning it at any hour of the day, every day. It's no wonder then, that when the biggest and most impressive Resident Evil game known for its tight and replayable mechanics and expansive systems in Resident Evil 4 gets a remake, that the entire speedrunning community would join in on the fun. In just this one short week since release, hundreds of thousands of hours have been poured into playing and enjoying the game. And for most people, there is still much more to unlock, complete, and play. But for a few, the game has already been cracked wide open. Speedrunners have already shattered Resident Evil 4 Remake. The remake faithfully expands upon the original in a ton of ways, creating new and interesting interactions across a vast 16 plus hour first playthrough. Tons of sections are reworked and redesigned, and there is a plethora of new mechanics enhancing the experience. For the most part, it's a perfectly seamless experience, the game interacting as it should with virtually zero bugs or glitches. For most people, the worst thing you could expect is the sniper scope dropping your frame rate a bit. But with a game as vast as this, there are sure to be some chinks in the armor. First, it was little things, seemingly intentional skips and tricks that create small sequence breaks and fun short skips that anyone can do. Before we get into it though, I would like to announce that I am hosting a speedrunning tournament that is an open qualifier. The prize pool is currently $5,000 and is open to contributions. The category will be New Game Pro Any% percent with glitches, and anyone who is running the game and has the Run.gg plugin enabled will be able to participate. The top 8 runners with valid runs on the Run.gg slash waifu runs after April 13th will qualify for a live event hosted on twitch.tv forward slash waifu on April 15th, where they will then compete head to head in a two round tournament for the prize pool. For more information, check out the Matcharino page in the description, and I'll link it in the pinned comment. With that being said, let's get back to the video. Some of the first things that were found were ways to break weights and locks early. The second room in the village has a small lock that you can shoot through a window, skipping having to go into the windmill. At the start of castle, there is a cannon that you have to raise to blow open a door. Normally, you have to go around the long way and drop down, then break this weight to raise the cannon. Then run all the way around. Instead, you can shoot the weight through the bars at the starting staircase and skip having to backtrack for the cannon. Then, Spicy TV found a skip in the section that's brand new after Waterhall where the giant throws rocks at you. You can skip going through a lot of the main section by breaking the weights through the gates that are locking them. If you throw a grenade at the right side of the first gate and then at the left side of the second, you can skip nearly half of this section. It was later discovered that you could shoot the first one and there was no grenade required. The shot is just a little bit tight. Then later in the castle, there is a section where you need to grab the goat's head from a statue after crossing an indoor bridge. There's an enemy that comes out and takes the bridge down by pulling a lever when you get about halfway across. But you could actually throw a flash or a grenade before the cutscene happens, killing or stunning him, stopping him from lowering the bridge. Normally, you would have to go through the whole bottom section, past a ton of enemies and even a red zealot, who now spawns in extra Las Plagas parasites. But instead, you just have a free pass to grab the key item and leave. These tricks all really feel intentional, actually. There are just some creative uses of your resources to achieve a realistic and approachable alternative solution to the presented problem. And Resident Evil games has always had stuff like that. In fact, the Ashley section now has a puzzle that you can actually sequence break if you can remember the solution to it. By entering the clock puzzle solution at the start of the level, you can just skip half of her section greatly increasing the quality of replays. In fact, there are tons of things like this, way too many to list in a video like this. The biggest one is probably the ability to use the sniper in the first village fight to shoot the bell in the church, instantly ending the bingo section. This one can only be done with a sniper rifle and the infinite rocket launcher unfortunately, which makes it impossible to do on new game speedruns, but in New Game Plus, you'll definitely see this one. It's a huge time save and removes a lot of the random elements in early game for that category. Speaking of reducing randomness, there's a trick that can be done in new game runs and you will likely see in every category. And that's using heavy grenades to kill the anti-aircraft gun on chapter 15. Normally, Mike is wrecking face and making light work of the island villagers. That is until the anti-aircraft cannon shows up. 
This is normally subverted by climbing a bunch of stairs, fighting your way through a horde of enemies, and then manning a machine gun, where you can then blast the anti-aircraft gun. Instead, however, you can simply toss some heavy grenades to finish it off right as it spawns, making Mike shoot the door to progress a lot faster. This makes this section way less random because you don't have to worry about the enemies in the section shooting you with rocket launchers or arrows while you're trying to shoot the turret. There are also two sections where using a rocket launcher can skip a ton of content. Right before the double gigante fight, there is a dynamite section where you normally have to go through a bunch of enemies, pull a lever, wait for a bridge to drop, and then grab some TNT. You then use the TNT to break open a door which lets you fight the double gigantes. Just like the original, you can actually skip this by shooting a rocket launcher into the wall, not having to do any of the extra section. Then on chapter 14, where you're with Ashley and she's doing the wrecking ball section, you can actually use heavy grenades to blow open the wall so that the very first hit of the wrecking ball instantly breaks it open, skipping the section. This can also be done with a rocket launcher. Island also has a few skips. This time it has to do with the turrets. The turrets usually automatically shoot you if you cross between the red lasers and them, but they also shoot enemies. So if you go up to this top here and let Utters try to kick you, when he does, he will go in the lasers first, and the turret will shoot him instead. Then you can pass behind him and have him block the bullets for you, skipping this entire room. You can also do this at the end of chapter 15 by having a Novisador hit you and having the Novisador take the bullets for you. And to top it all off, in hilarious fashion, you can actually throw a golden egg at Salazar to instantly stun him and do about 60% of his total health. So far, everything I have shown could be considered intentional, and most likely would be allowed in a glitchless speedrun. But there is much, much more that was discovered in this short week. With speedrunners and glitch hunters coming from all over the speedrunning community, it was only a matter of time before something crazy got found. I was surprised too, because normally the Resident Evil speedrunning community is very anti-glitches. When the Out of Bounds was found in Resident Evil Village, there was a huge outcry for a glitchless category immediately. Even though the Out of Bounds itself was perfectly consistent, easy, and only saved about two minutes over the two years it's been known. The any percent run was pushed to the back of the leaderboard and forgotten about, glitchless being the primary category that people would actually run. But this would not be the case at all for Resident Evil 4 Remake. In fact, when the first major glitch was found out nearly the first day, everyone was in a mad scramble to try it for themselves and implement it into their speedruns. Matt Matt, a legend and OG glitch hunter, figured out that when you're aiming with the rifle and using a scope, if you look down, Leon's model actually gets pushed backwards, and if you back up into a wall, his hitbox gets slightly pushed inside of it. Under normal circumstances, this would just be a bit of trivia, but as I'm sure you could guess, this video wouldn't exist if it was. If you do this into a double door, you can clip about halfway through it, just far enough to be able to, when you turn and unscope, flick around and grab the door open prompt from the wrong side. This clips Leon completely through the door, snapping him to the prompt of opening the door, but from the opposite side. This can be used in a ton of slots to sequence break and skip whole rooms, fights, and puzzles. It was initially discovered to be useful at the start of the castle to skip the first Garador mini-boss. Right after the shield guys make their first appearance, you can use the sniper to do a sniper clip through the double doors, sending you past the Garador fight and right to Waterhall. This is a huge time save, saving at least two minutes, but it wouldn't stop there. Once one skip is found, there are sure to be more. It's quite simple, really. Once you know how the glitch works, you can just treat it like any other mechanic and just, you know, apply your knowledge about how it works here to other places in the game. Once you know you can clip through one double door, that would mean that you should most likely be able to clip through any double door. Unfortunately, it only works on double doors specifically. Presumably, this is because there is a tiny gap between both doors, giving you slightly less resistance than a solid single door. But that means it was time to test those other double doors, and people immediately got to work. Chapter 14 would have the biggest skip in the whole game to this day. By sniper clipping through this gate, you can activate the lift and send yourself straight to the Krauser fight, skipping the regenerator room and the wrecking ball fight. This skip is huge, as it skips what was thought to be a mostly auto-scroller in the Wrecking Ball room, and in total it saves nearly 6 minutes. A massive skip that skipped one of the least liked sections of the game. And with some practice, the door clips turned out to be consistent and quite simple. 
By mashing the interact button with two keys and raising the DPI of your mouse, you can make the door clips nearly 100% consistent. And there is almost no punishment to failing them as you can just retry it right again. The discovery led to a ton of potential sequence breaks. Fortunately, the game has a lot of checks in place so that you can't sequence break across chapters. At first, we had to figure that out by just pure trial and error. Just clipping through doors and seeing where we could go. But quickly, the community developed mods and tools to help test what the boundaries of the game really are. Being able to teleport to set locations or through walls, for example. Once this was developed, Psychotics made a comprehensive list of what can and can't be sequence broken. At least to our knowledge. This is information that a few years ago for most speed games wouldn't be information that you would learn in even 20 years, but in only the first week, it has become common knowledge. The power of the speedrunning community has grown so much, it's astonishing. It's to the point where there is almost no point in testing things in the game legitimately, when you can just prove if it'll work theoretically with mods first. No need to waste 20 hours trying to lab a skip just to have it not work. Now you can prove it would work before you try to test it out. Essentially, he compiled a list of potential large skips that would work and how you'd have to do them. In Chapter 2, you could skip most of the village if you could clip through the Eagle Door. No such method has been discovered to clip through key item doors, as they don't have interact prompts on the other side. Or if they do, you can't grab it from the other side because the interact prompt for the key item is so big that it covers it up entirely. From the start of Chapter 4, you can go right to Ashley after doing the church puzzle, but it would require you clipping through multiple key item doors or solid walls with no such methods discovered as of yet. You cannot skip Cabin as it's hard-coded to progress. In Chapter 6, the Chainsaw Sisters and the Mendez boss fight in theory could be skipped, but at the moment, there was no such methods. Chapter 7 and 8, you only need to hit the end level cutscene to end the level, but would require many, many out-of-bounds tricks to get there. The Verdugo fight has an end level trigger right above the elevator that in theory could be hit to skip the fight, and the Double Gigante fight is technically not required to be riding the minecart but Lewis is needed to start it. I actually found a way to skip this one before I saw the post. Sniper clipping through the door at the start of the fight to try and skip it. Unfortunately, then Lewis is stuck inside the room and you're soft locked. After that, there is a bunch of smaller potential skips, but nothing major. One might immediately think that you could simply sniper clip through the door into the Novistador's room and head right to Salazar. This would make sense because right on the other side of that door is the rail cart which takes you to the clock tower and then the Salazar fight. From there, you just ride the elevator to the top and fight Salazar, skipping multiple chapters. Or it would if you were actually in the right chapter. It seems like boss fights and other sections like this won't actually spawn because you're not in the right chapter, making this potentially 20 plus minute skip impossible. Also, even if you somehow manage to make it past Salazar and get onto the island, once you get to the end of the game, you would soft lock because you need Lewis's key to enter the lab at the end of chapter 15. You don't get Lewis's key unless you do the Krauser fight, which is after the minecart section. While these potential skips were starting to be routed, there were other businesses that needed to be attended to in the meantime. There are charms in this game that give you stab bonuses. They're acquired by completing the Merchant's Shooting Gallery minigame. When completed, it gives you tokens that you could then use on the Gachapon machine, and it gives you random charms. One of those charms is the Striker Charm, and this charm is a reference to the Dipman glitch in the original game. A really cool little nod to the speedrunning community. Shout out to Capcom for that. It actually gives Leon an 8% faster movement speed increase. 8% is a huge increase. Getting such a charm in a run would be a huge advantage. Obviously, New Game Plus runs would start with it, but what about New Game runs? Well, you'd have to play all the way to the first shooting gallery about 30 minutes into the game, and then go down the elevator, do the shooting gallery, and pull the striker charm first try for optimal time save. Exterminator in the speedrun discord did the math and found out that there are about 30 total charms, and the game seeds the RNG for the charms, so it doesn't matter what coin you use in the gachapon machine. Assuming the seed equally distributes the striker charm the same as every other charm, that would mean you have a 3.3% chance of getting the charm on your first try. And if the distribution of the legendary charms is less than the normal charms, it would be even less likely than that. Basically, you would be playing the first 30 minutes of the game to RNG roll a 3.3% drop, just to save time everywhere else. Needless to say, I don't think this will probably ever be meta. Even the 50% grenade launcher Magnum RNG roll in RE3 OG that was only 15 minutes into the run was modded out in favor of actually being able to finish every run. With that sorted, people started to find more of these sequence breaking skips. As far as double door clips go, it seems that the game is tapped out for now. 
but it was quickly discovered that displacing your hitbox was useful for more than just opening doors. On an island while waiting for the keycard to be upgraded, you can place your hitbox in the wall, making the enemies lose your location, essentially stalling them out until the keycard is done. It was also soon discovered that checkpoints and auto saves save the player's location in real time. So if you displace your hitbox into a wall and then got a checkpoint, if you loaded the checkpoint, you would then spawn inside a wall. This absolutely shatters the game. The Out of Bounds movement in RE4 Remake is a lot different and more restrictive than the original. You can't walk on air, and if you fall out of the map, you'll fall until you void out and land back in bounds. But you can walk through any wall from the backside, and by edging around the ground collision, you can shimmy your way around a few rooms. The first use of this was after Cabin during the Bella Sisters fight. Normally, you can kill one sister to get the crank from her dead body, then fight your way back to the crank door and use the crank to slowly open the door. Instead though, you can shoot the lock to unlock the back door and enter from there. Aim the sniper and displace your hitbox into the wall, so when your game gives you a checkpoint, you just reload it and it spawns you out of bounds. Then you can go around the outside of the arena and back in bounds after the crank door. This actually doesn't save a ton of time in the lower difficulties, but it does save some time. On Pro, there are no auto saves, so it can't be done there. At the end, the Bella Sisters are just there. Bing Chiling! It seems the game spawns the boss enemies early out of bounds so that it can teleport them into the arena when the cutscene plays, but this just means that you can fuck with them after doing the skip. Ashley then teleports to you when you hit the cutscene trigger for the Mendez chase. Speaking of Mendez, the big cheese is the next on the list of skips. You can get a checkpoint going down the stairs while your hitbox is distended, then when you reload you're inside the wall. This one is a lot harder than the previous skips because you need to be able to keep Leon inside the wall. If he pops out of either side, you'll be stuck, and we'll have to reload checkpoint to try again. If you just run ahead past the merchant though, you can then crouch underneath a wall and make it past the Mendez fight without ever fighting him. This is a huge time save and most importantly, it saves a ton of resources. Mendez is just here chilling on the other side of the barn. There are other uses for descending the hitbox as well. In chapter 5 when you first save Ashley, normally you have to escort her all the way to the cabin, past lots of enemies, and it's really inconsistent because Ashley's AI loves to get stuck on stuff. But you can distend your hitbox into the wall and then jump down the ladder. This puts you out of bounds, and then you clip back in bounds at the bottom floor without Ashley. Ashley is supposed to go out the window with you and follow you to the cabin, but doing this skip gets her stuck in the attic. She actually is safer up there though, much safer than if she followed you. And when you reach the cabin, she just teleports to you. This makes this section faster and much more consistent. You also don't have to deal with Ashley, so that's great. While you can't clip through most single doors with the sniper, it turns out there are a few where you actually can. On islands specifically, there are these crank doors, and after distending your hitbox inside of them, instead of flicking around, you just let go of the scope and then press forward, and Leon will clip all the way through, pushing into the door from the backside. This works because the doors are so thin that you can actually just push into them. For the most part, the big skips can only be done on the difficulties lower than professional. That's because there are no auto saves in Pro, making it much harder to get out of bounds. But not impossible. Hayes Blade found a way to skip Mendez's fight on Pro. It turns out the typewriter also saves your exact location just like auto saves do. So if you clip into the wall and flick the typewriter fast enough, you can have it save your location while you're inside the wall. Doing it twice then puts you out of bounds in the same spot as the auto save version allowing you to skip Mendez on Pro. This is huge for the money routing and professional, as rockets are two times as expensive on that difficulty. Of all the skips in this game, the funniest one has to be another one found by Hazeblade though. This one is called Duffelbag Ashley. Right at the end of the game, Resident Evil 4 gets confused and thinks it's The Last of Us, so you have to carry Ashley really, really slowly through a hallway for about three minutes. It's terrible and everyone hates it. But it turns out, you can clip out of bounds and fall into the void, and when you spawn back in, eventually after voiding out, your animations are slightly messed up. So when you pick up Ashley, she gets picked up with a different set of animations. Instead of baby carrying her, you instead carry her like a duffel bag, with her going full limp mode. This increases your movement speed by like 3 times, making this section much faster. And way funnier. The Resident Evil 4 speedrunning community has made some absolute insane progress in this last week since the game is released. It's always so fun to see what crazy tech they'll come up with next. So far, it seems like most people are adapting to the glitches and routing around them. Of course, like always, there will be a glitchless category, 
but this time around, because the game is so long and so difficult, it seems like people are leaning more on the side of just beating the game as fast as possible. Considering New Game Standard is still only just now getting under two hours, I think the game will have a ton of room to change and grow. Remember to check out the tournament on the 15th of April on twitch.tv forward slash waifu. I'll also be doing speedruns of New Game Standard and all achievements on that channel as well in the meantime. Thanks so much for watching and stay stylish.